Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video here on the channel. So today I want to do something that I've been meaning to get to for quite a while now and that is going to be to do a little bit of a guided workshop tour, show you guys the kind of tools that I use on the channel um, and for my everyday day-to-day -day repairs, things like that and uh, also why I use them. Uh, I've been meaning to do this for quite a while like I said and I've just bought myself a nice new tripod so I thought you know what, now's a, as good a time as ever to actually do one. Uh, before we actually get started, a couple of little things. Um, number one, I'm a very messy technician. I am a very, very messy technician, so you're going to see a little bit of mess, uh, but I don't care. Um, I'm a messy technician, this is a workshop, and um, yeah, it's one of them things. So, um, yeah, that, that's that. Uh, another thing, uh, you'll have to excuse eye contact and things like that. I'm not a vlogging person. Uh, I do not do vlogs, and it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of awkward for me to be able to, you know, make eye contact with the camera and things like that. Um, so the camera's in obviously landscape mode at the moment, and the camera's on the left-hand side of the of the phone. And uh, yeah, it's just a little bit tricky. Um, I always find myself drifting over towards the middle of the screen, uh, you know, where the um, where I can actually see my face and things like that. I find myself trying to make eye contact with myself, and it's got it's like really really weird. So. Um, hopefully you don't have to put up with my face for too long, um, it's not exactly the prettiest mug. I've got this weird beard thing here, I'm not a real man, I can't grow a beard at all. Last little thing is a quick announcement, um, first of all I want to say thank you to everyone for uh, you know, getting to 4,000 subscribers, that was hit a couple of days ago and I really, want, I really want to let you know that I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Um, I'm trying my best to get to 5,000 subs by the end of the year, so if you're not already subscribed, you know, Click that button down below, it is free. Uh, get subscribed, and uh, I'm also going to be giving away a PlayStation 4. So, a real, fully working PlayStation 4 with the cables and controller uh, when we get to 5,000 subscribers. Hopefully, that's before the end of the year, like my goal was at the start of the year. So, we had about 3,000 subs at the end of the year, at the start of the year, uh, when I started doing these, these videos, and now we're on just over 4,000. So, Hopefully we can get to uh, 5,000 subs by the end of the year, which was my goal. Uh, we need around about 9 subs per day, uh, which is definitely achievable. Um, my channel isn't that big, it's not that popular, I don't get that many subscribers, but if we could just like, you know, push it that little bit more, um, get to 5,000 subs and reach my goal. Like I said, going to be giving away a PlayStation 4, and also for a, for a runner-up price, because I know a PlayStation 4 is, you know, it, it's a pretty good price. Um, by anyone's standards, a PlayStation 4 is a pretty good prize. It's still over £100 to buy. Um, so for a second place prize, I'm going to be giving away a £50 gift card, either for PSN or for Microsoft, or a £50 Visa card if you didn't want the, you know, if you just wanted to spend the money. Uh, so the £50 Visa card will be, you know, one of those that you get from supermarkets, the prepaid cards. I'll activate it, send it out to someone that can use it as they wish. Um, so that will be a second place prize. So around about £200 worth of uh, giveaways when we get to 5,000 subs. Um, so if you want, like I said, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed now. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that video uh, when it does come, when we get to 5,000 subs. I'll probably post it around about two weeks before I anticipate getting to 5,000 subs just to give people a chance to enter. Um, but uh, yeah, get subscribed and we'll, uh, we'll be giving those stuff away. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so looking right in front of me then, um, I'll give you a perfect example of why I am a messy technician. Uh, so, number one is that I'm very unorganised. Um, this is, this in front of me is just a box of bits for controllers and things like that. You know, we've got some Xbox One motherboards, um, Xbox One controller motherboards. We've got some random fly spray because flies are a big problem at this time of year. There's no food source, but for some reason they're just get attracted to the light uh, we've got uh, we've got a box full of um, cables which keep getting you know a little bit wrangled up and stuff and uh, there's an Xbox one there which I need to put back together and sell um, so that one's uh, that one's actually you know fixed and ready to sell a um, couple of PS4 motherboards which are fixed and ready to put into chassis uh, so those motherboards actually work I'm not sure what uh, what software version they're on, but they do work. Um, I think one of them's on version 4.50, so I may even give the 4.50 version away if I can find the matching disk drive board to it. Um, but that said, you don't need a disk drive board for 4.5, so uh, I might just give it away anyway as an extra prize. 
Uh, right, so over here we've got uh, some very dodgy electrics. Um, this was supposed to be temporary. I need to get a metal enclosure to bring this up to regs. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got a box full of Xbox One parts. You know some, you know some Xbox One fans, some Xbox One Slim fans, um, disc drives, things like that. Now just parts that I use day day in day out. We've got some controller toggle, controller analogs there, the toggles. Uh, this pack here is PS4 thumb grips. Uh, this is just stuff I chucked in here this morning just to, you know, tidy up the workshop and stuff. Um, got a spare set of um, test leads there. One of these has got the, the crocodile clip thing on. And, uh, yeah, th that's just a set of spare test leads. Uh, I've got a random tin of lighter gas, which I uh, don't know why that's in here. Uh, yes, for those of you that don't know, I do smoke. Uh, so, yeah. Probably run out of gas and just filled up my lighter in here, but never mind. Uh, over here we've got another box of junk, we've got a box of flux here, uh, so the flux that I use is the Kingbow RMA 218, uh, cheap and cheerful, I'm a cheapskate, that's one thing you will learn about me along the lines, along the way. Uh, got an old mixer here, um, which I used to use for DJing, uh, I used to be a DJ back in the day, not one of those uh, scratchy scratchy mixy mixy type DJs, but it was just, you know, karaoke's, discos, Weddings, funerals, as strange as it sounds, parties, that sort of stuff. Uh, so it wasn't really DJing; it was it was more entertainment and things like that. Uh, so yeah, that's one bit of history that not a lot of people know about me. Uh, we've got the speakers there to the old DJing. Actually, if we look over here, we've actually got the uh, the old DJ lights. I'm not sure if I mentioned those. Very dusty because they haven't been used in a long time, but I've just got nowhere to store them in the house, so they're in the workshop. Um, like I said, I am a very messy technician, I'm not going to lie, uh, I'm a very messy technician, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, right, I think I've missed a few things over here. Um, oh yeah, I, th I think I mentioned these, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned these, just Xbox One chassis, uh, things like that. You know, just a few cases and stuff for Xbox Ones, we've got my very boiling jig, uh, Nintendo Switch motherboard, which I'm working on, that's one of my own, uh, which I stripped down for donor parts and now I've got to rebuild. Uh, I've got another box of random stuff here, you know, like um, Nintendo Switch parts. We've got uh, some cases, some chassis, mid-frames, power supplies. Uh, down here, more random junk. Uh, not junk, it's more parts and stuff. But more PS4 stuff on the floor because, again, I'm a messy technician. Um, <laughs> what, what can I say? I'm not going to lie to people. I am messy, you know. Um, I keep my desk tidy, but that's about it. Uh, got another box of uh, PS4 bits and junk here we're going to mount for the um you know for when i'm recording the rework uh, bga rework station i'll get into that in a bit uh but over here we've got the computer uh this is the, this is the actual version 4.50 motherboard uh so this is a uh i think this is a 4.50 uh oh no that's got a safe bridge issue um so that needs a new safe bridge. Um, I've, I've got the 4.50 one somewhere. I think it's actually that one, actually. I think it's actually that one there that's underneath that MBA case. But, uh, yeah, I've got to build that up. Um, see if I can find the disk drive board to it. Uh, so, onto the computer then. We've got the sound system. So I do have some music in here when I'm, you know, when I'm on my own and not recording. Uh, so we've got just, just a standard, you know, cheap, run-of-the-mill... Logitech 5.1 surround sound. I'm not really much of an audio file anymore. I used to be dead on with my audio and stuff, but uh, not anymore. Uh, just haven't got the time. Uh, so we've got the main computer. Uh, this Logitech surround sound is hooked up to the PC monitor. So the PC monitor is actually a Samsung 24-inch curved. Um, the computer has a bit of history. Uh, the The main reason I built this computer originally was for the family to game on. And at the time when I built it, it was a top you know, top top spec computer. It had a 8700K, it had 32 gigs of RAM, two M.2 drives running in RAID 0, it had um, an extra, you know, 4 terabyte drive, it had a 1080 Ti graphics card, 750 watt power supply, um, it had a um, Z370 motherboard, and a NZXT case. The NZXT case was, was really nice. Um, unfortunately, I broke the side panel and lost that one. Uh, don't know how you lose the side panel. I think I took it out on the scrap from my brother-in-law, to be honest, by accident. But it is what it is. 
Uh, but the actual power, the actual PC itself used to be a top spec computer, and then when my mom passed away at the end of 2018, uh, just after Christmas 2018, um, <clears throat> basically I couldn't afford to pay for my my cut of the funeral, so I had to raise around about I think it was around about 1,200 pounds, something like that, um, and basically you know I, I couldn't afford it. At the time when I, you know, when my mum passed away, I was out of work, I was unemployed, um, and, you know, I, basically, I couldn't afford to pay for it, so I ended up selling the 1080 Ti, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, and, uh, I think that was it, I, I think I sold that, and then I sold my Xbox One X as well, um, you know, to actually afford to pay for the funeral. Um, I'm not a rich person, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a day-by-day live type of guy, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of them things. I had to sell off the parts to that. Um, I bought that when I had a car crash in 2016 and ended up with a compensation from it. Uh, so I built that machine. It cost me around about two grand, I think it was. Um, on top of that, I built, I bought, you know, my car and bought bought the family some nice stuff and things like that, new phones and whatever. Um, but I, that was the first thing to go. Uh, the parts out of this was the first thing to go when I couldn't afford to pay for the funeral. You know, it was an unexpected death and things like that. I don't want sympathy, obviously. Please don't, don't, sit, don't put any comments in the in the uh, comments down below saying sorry for your loss. I've heard it all before. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the keyboard is a K70 Lux. Uh, this I originally bought a K70 Lux and I water damaged it about four months ago. Now, yes, I do water damage repair, but the problem is the with these is that when you take it all apart, you know the the 150 odd keyboard keys or whatever's on there, and then take apart the 30 odd screws. Um, the actual board itself is moulded into this top frame, so that's really annoying. And that's uh, I think that's aluminium that frame, uh, so there was no way of getting it out. So I ended up just buying a new one. I bought one with spares and repairs, and there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, apart from a few missing keys, so I just took the keys off my old one and just put them onto there. It is Cherry MX red switches, so it's got that nice, you know, clicky clicky feel to it. Really nice keyboard. Uh, the, the mouse I can never remember the name. I think it's a Skimitar Pro RGB. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think it's a Skimitar, um, but I'll double check and I'll leave it in the description. Um, this it's the one with the hot keys and things on it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, in terms of multimeter, I use a Precision Gold. This is a USB multimeter, and it's a pretty decent one. Um, I don't use the correct leads that came with it. I use some different ones because these have got in interchangeable tips on them. Uh, if that thing will ever focus. So these are the more precision, narrow pointing tips. Which way is my camera? Oh, I don't know. Uh, so these are the more precision tips and things and uh, you know I can unscrew those take them off and change the heads I can put uh, you know if I wanted to put a you'll have to excuse the camera wobbling a little bit but I can put these you know these little things on if I want these crocodile clip things um, so I can put that sort of stuff on uh, it's a really good multimeter I ended up giving my brother-in-law something for this uh, so he's a scrap man and he found this on the scrap brand new in the box uh, in a skip um, so if you if you don't know what a scrap man is, it's basically a skip diver, um, and basically they collect scrap metal and things. And he picked this up and he was like, "Do you want it?" Uh, I think I gave him around about fifty pounds worth of stuff for this. Really good multimeter. He's got absolutely everything I'll ever need on there, and uh, it's made, made by Precision Gold, which is a pretty good brand. It's the N56FU. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good brand. Uh, screwdriver set. The the famous but annoying iFixit kit as you may have already seen in all of my videos I use the iFixit kit so basically this thing is so annoying because number one the magnet always flies off that's around the workshop somewhere stuck to some piece of metal somewhere I don't know where uh, but uh, yeah the magnet I've lost uh, the pH zero it's around somewhere uh, I have got spares this is the second kit I've bought and the reason it's the second kit I've bought is because this keeps happening so if we take a look at the head itself, you'll see that it's got a little gap there. Now it's not meant to have this gap. And the reason this forms is because for whatever reason, when I fixed it designed this, what they did was they basically split it off into three sections. So you've got the bottom section here, which is the grip. Then you've got another section here, which unscrews from this. And then you've got another section here, which unscrews from this. But the 
the bad thing about that is the fact that the top of this is on a bearing which means that when you're spinning it you know you've got free movement without having to actually move your hands so you know you know you can turn and whatever uh, but the problem with that is that this is on a bearing now the annoying thing about that is that when this starts to come apart like that you know you'll you'll see that's actually you know fairly far off the off being flush with the rest of the screwdriver but when it starts to come apart you can't screw it back in you have to basically sit there and you know like um spin it around as fast as you possibly can and push down on it and just hope that it's actually screwing the screw part in without turning the uh you know the the bearing that's inside it it's really annoying um but it is a good kit and uh you know for 30 pound it's got every screwdriver i'll ever need uh, for the kind of work that I do and I even use it to do some kind of you know um, general day-to-day -day repairs in the house you know like sockets and things I changed the socket the other day with that so one of the one of the switches on my plug socket in the house ceased and um, due to overheating actually um, you know someone had plugged a extension cable into an, a plug socket and then ran a dryer off it I don't know who it was but uh, yeah it caused it to overheat and ended up messing up the socket so I had to change that, uh, but yeah, that's uh, it's a pretty good kit, even though it does have its faults. Uh, in terms of a heat gun, I use whoops. See, I told you I'm not a vlogging person. Uh, this is actually the first time using this tripod. Um, but in terms of a heat gun, I use at the moment a Atten ST-862D. Now, this particular heat gun I purchased on Lewis Rossman's recommendation, and the reason I purchased this is because apparently it rivals the Quick. Now, I don't have any, you know, any way of comparing because I've never tried the Quick. Um, I think it's is it the 861DW. Um, so apparently it rivals the Quick, but it's uh, more less than half the price. So this was 170. I think it was 179 euros directly from supplier so uh, directly from manufacturer so i'll purchase this directly from the atten.eu website i'm not sponsored by the way uh, although atten if you are watching you know i like your products hit me up um <laughs> but uh yeah i purchased this obviously with my own money this was just a de general um you know general needed upgrade um and uh, i really like this machine because the kind of work i do you know i work with you know Xbox One and PS4 motherboards and they have a really high thermal mass and this does a really good job of you know keeping a consistent um, heat output and a consistent airflow and it really really is a good little piece of kit uh, for the money you know it's it's very well worth the money for you know I had a few problems with shipping with this uh, I might do that in a different video I had a few problems the manufacturer did screw up the audio at uh, the audio the manufacturer did screw up the order uh, pretty royally, to be honest. They ended up waiting two weeks for this to come. It was supposed to take two days. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's one of the things. Uh, the one thing I like about this is it's got some presets. So you can still press number one there, and it went to 250. If I press number two, 380. And then number three is 480. So number one, I use on 30% airflow. Uh, and I use this for preheating. So I use 250 degrees for preheating just to, you know, get some heat around the general area. Um, and also I use it to soak up the excess isopropyl alcohol uh, when I'm cleaning off the board. So I use 250 degrees because, you know, coming out of the heat gun, it would take an awful long time for, for 250 degrees to melt solder. So uh, I use that for mainly for preheating and drying up the isopropyl alcohol. 380 I use for Nintendo Switches mainly um, and the reason I use them for Nintendo Switches is because the Nintendo Switch has a much smaller thinner board and it doesn't take a lot to get things off the board. The only time I use 420 on a Nintendo Switch is when I'm working on the uh, USB Type-C port because I don't want to risk pulling pads. So I'll go a little bit hotter there just to make sure uh, don't pull the pads, but not too much hotter because obviously it's a low thermal mass board. Uh, number three is 480 80%, and the reason I use this is because uh, is when I'm doing HDMI port work or when I'm removing the HDMI encoder OC, the retimer OC from a Xbox One X because those things are a pain to remove. There's a lot of thermal mass around that particular area of the board, 
and they are a pain in the backside to get off the board. Uh, the Xbox One X, if you don't know, is a very thick board. It's probably the thickest, I think it's the thickest one that we work with. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I use 480 for that as well. It does come with some extra nozzles, so the nozzles that it does come with, I've got laid out on the desk here, so... Uh, these are the four nozzles that this machine comes with and as you can see we've got some different you know varying size nozzles there um the one i use mainly is you know it's a uh it's an angled nozzle 45 degree bent nozzle and the reason for that is because i can you know i can i can get really close to the board itself on an angle like this and i can still use it like this you know and direct the airflow pretty well but uh, i use it like that uh, I've also got a bigger size angled nozzle. I bought those separately. Um, one thing I like is it's got a power on, power off button on the actual handle. Um, so you can see that's on there. But the one good thing is when I put it back down on the holster, you'll see it starts to turn off. So the temperature is reducing. It's turned the heating element off, and when that gets down to 100 degrees, the airflow will go off as well. Prevents it from excessive use and uh, excessive wear on the heating element itself, uh, which is always a good feature, and also prevents fires as well. Uh, in terms of a in terms of a heat gun, uh, not a heat gun, a soldering iron. I use this TS100. Uh, so this again was based on Lewis Rossman's recommendation. This cost me around about fifty-two pound. I paid a little bit more than I should have done for this, but the reason I paid a little bit more was because one, it come with a power brick. Uh, so it come with an 18.5 volt power brick, and also because it come from the UK, I didn't want to wait. Um, funny story, actually, the the delivery company actually lost this and delivered it to next door. And then it, when I phoned him up to say, like, my parcel's um, marked as delivered, but I haven't got it, where is it? He come back straight away. I mean, fair play to the guy. He come back straight away, offered to buy me a new one, and then... I was like, look, I'll, I'll have a look, I'll have a word with the neighbours, see what, see if they've had it, and it ended up being next door. So, I phoned the guy back. Um, he gave me his personal mobile number, and uh, he was a really nice guy. He was, he was dead young. He hadn't long started the job, but uh, uh, he basically didn't want his uh, delivery company to find out because he would have got the sack, and uh, you know, or fired, or whatever you call it. So, uh, yeah, uh, but I use the TS100. A uh, couple of reasons. Number one is we've got direct heat tips so these tips in particular uh, as you can see there's a couple of contacts on here if i can get this thing to focus a couple of contacts on here and uh, it, basically the heating element is inside the tip itself so it's got a much better recovery rate than you know something like a sleeve tip uh, so this is the newer technology that it uses and uh, you know for the price of it you know it, it's absolutely ridiculous how good this thing is for the price of it um, I do need to set this to left-handed so as it shows the screen the right way around. It's got an OLED dis OLED display. Um, you know, it's a really good thing. It's a really good machine or really good piece of kit uh, for the price. If I just plug that into my bench power supply, I can even modify the firmware to say the colder. So this originally goes to 400 degrees, but it is open so open source firmware, and there's some firmware online where you can change the logo, you can change the uh, the settings and things like that and this has got the modified firmware uh, for some reason that's just gone off um, the the uh, banana clip is a little bit loose uh, so if we just press on on there now that's at room te that was at room temperature and you'll see how quick it actually it's running at 19.3 volts at the moment you'll see how quick it actually gets damn it the uh, I really need to sort that banana clip out and get it pushed in properly uh, right, let's try that again. So power on. What's going on with it? Right, I'm gonna. Uh, right, let's try and balance the um, the camera a little bit, just so I can actually show you this thing because it doesn't usually shut off. Um, the bench power supply is on a bit of a on a bit of a mission today to ruin my video I'm not gonna let it doesn't usually go off that's the bench power supply not this I could use the included power supply but um, I generally run this at 24 volts uh, which is rated for 24 I've actually run it at 30 it's insane how quick it gets to 450 at 30 at 30 volts 
but the actual MOSFETs inside get really hot really quick so they're not rated for that. Uh, but you can see that's up to temperature and it's holding pretty steady. Uh, it's a really good piece of kit. Um, in terms of uh, you know cleaning, tip cleaning and things like that, if this thing will focus, uh, you know I'll just use the old the, well, the old boy a sponge thing. Uh, it cleans the tip really nicely. Uh, I can't get this camera to focus on that, but uh, yeah, that's what I use for that. Uh, over here we've got a Atten um, fume extractor. I don't really use this, but I've got it for free technically. Um, so when I purchased the heat gun, I also purchased this and a couple of accessories. And the reason I purchased this was because the heat gun itself um, was 179 euros. This was 25 euros, but to get free shipping, which would have been 30 euros, I had to put something else in the cart. So I put that in the cart. Um, and then I also just, you know, I also just put these things in the cart as well. You know, a couple of reels of solder. Uh, so I basically got that for free because I got free shipping. So, uh, no, I'm not sponsored by Atten, like I said. But I just chose these because that was basically free. Uh, so we've got some solder wire here. We've got some 0.5mm uh, for general day-to-day -day use. We've got some 0.8mm um, for the bigger wires and bigger gauges and stuff like that. Uh, whoops. Got some jumper wire which I actually get from my brother in law. Uh, this stuff comes out of a microwave, believe it or not, and I use this mainly for HDMI trace repair. I have got some 0.1mm thinner stuff, but other than that, um, I use this stuff for, my, for most of it. Uh, so I'll just take the fan out of a broken microwave and just, you know, repurpose the magnet wire to use the jumper wire because I'm a cheapskate. Uh, but yeah, there's probably about three technicians lifetime supply worth of jumper wire on there so um, I might consider start giving it away to, to um, patrons and supporters of the channel and things uh, over here we've got a selection of tips um, these tips are actually for the quick uh, I bought them on eBay 20 pound for a cheap set just to use as extras when I need to go into those you know long to reach places uh, because these tips actually you know they actually come out fairly far but the bottom of it doesn't actually get hot it's only past this line which gets hot so it means you can actually hold it there, uh, but I can I can extend my reach with those. So I do use those very very occasionally. I do have some smaller tips, um, but there's a box, just a little tub of random stuff that I use daily. Um, got a few, you know, I've got a little selection of random smaller tips here. So we've got a knife style tip for working on QFNs. Uh, so this knife style tip is basically when I've soldered the QFN, swap to this tip and I can slide down the side of it and just clean up the solder joints. We've got a, uh, I think it's a chisel tip, um, if the thing will focus. Uh, yeah, so a chisel tip, we've got a chisel tip there, that's for working on HDMI ports, things like that. and uh, Or the ground planes of HDMI ports rather. And then we've got a, a pointy bent angled thing here. Uh, these cost around about eight dollars, uh, around about eight pound each uh, to buy uh, per tip, so they're quite expensive. Um, oh, right, onto the microscope, I guess. So this is a Amscope um, microscope. It's a double bo double boom arm or double arm boom, whatever it is. Uh, so it's an Amscope. I forget the model. Um, I bought this second hand off someone who thought he could solder and couldn't. Um, he bought it brand new. He never used it, so I. Uh, I bought it off him for £300, which was around about £100 off. Um, it was brand new when I had it, and I originally bought this ring light. So this is just a cheap ring light off Amazon, because like I said, I'm a cheapskate. And it was supposed to fit the uh, it was supposed to fit this one, and it doesn't. Um, so I ended up hot gluing the thing on. I will get a proper one someday. That fell off last night, actually, while I was tidying the desk up in preparation for this video. Uh, we've got a... 0.5x Barlow lens there, buy those off eBay for around about £20. That basically just screws onto here, and what that does is it allows me to increase the working distance. I think it's actually reverse thread. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember. No, it's not. It's just awkward. Um, so this basically increases the working distance of the microscope. So you can see my microscope is pretty high now. And it's actually in line with my eye, which means I don't have to worry about... Is that... That's better. Um, it means I don't have to worry about bending over and hurting my back while I'm under the microscope all day. Because it's fairly in line with my eyesight. And uh, I actually need another one for the microscope camera. Because I've, I'm using an adapted eyepiece for that. 
the microscope camera I purchased off eBay for around about £85. That's the one that you see on the channel. And it's a pretty good microscope camera for the money. Uh, because something like this would normally knock you back around about you know, £200-£300. Uh, you know, microscope cameras can get pretty expensive. Oh, okay, ladies and gents, so apologies for the jump cut there. Uh, my camera stopped recording. I don't know why. Um, 30 minutes in. But, uh, yeah, so this this uh, reduction lens... I'll just check back the footage and that's roughly where I got to. Uh, but this reduction lens um, increases the field of view here. Uh, and this reduction lens here increases the field of view for the camera that you see. I do need to get another one of these because I want to be able to allow you to see exactly what I can see. And my working distance is about twice what you can see on the camera. So, uh, that's the plan for that. As you can see, this is all over the desk now because I was going through that. Uh, so, on the actual desk here, uh, you know, these are usually over across to the side here. But we've got some some Gootwick. Uh, I really like the Gootwick brand. It's really cheap and really, really good. It certainly does the job. Uh, it's around about £2.50 a roll off eBay for 1.5 metres. Got a couple of different selections. I've got some 3mm three, three width. I've got some 2.5mm uh, width and uh, some 1.5mm width as well so quite a few different selections depending on the job that I'm doing the 1.5mm width I'll use, I use primarily on Nintendo Switches but you know they're a lot smaller, things are a lot more compressed uh, here we have uh, some uh, the USB amp meter so this is what I use for basically checking the power draw on phones and Nintendo Switches gives me a general idea of what's going on with the board um, based on the current draw and the the, uh, the voltage drop that I see on the actual uh, device itself. So, yeah, we've got some uh, some King Ball flux there, a couple of tubes of that. Uh, we've got some different coloured PCB masks here, some solder masks. This is what I use when I'm repairing traces, just to protect the board afterwards, uh, or to protect the work that I do. We've got a couple of flux brushes lying around. Um, well, these are supposed to be flux brushes, but I use them for IPA mainly. Um, that's uh, that was supposed to be one of those, you know, push isopropyl alcohol dispensers, but the seal broke on it after the first hour. Uh, really not a good product. Uh, got the actual isopropyl alcohol there. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but there's a box of just random stuff here. Some some more solder tips and things like that. Um, the cheap H Y five ten. Um, yeah, thermal paste. Uh, I do have some MX4 as well, which I use on certain consoles for certain businesses or for a certain business uh, because he bought it and that's what he wanted on his consoles. So I use that specifically for him. Um, I've got some uh, toothbrushes. Uh, I basically use these whenever that, whenever I feel like they're getting a little bit worse for wear. Uh, I'll bring them into the workshop, start using them in here to clear boards. Uh, got some Amtec Flux, which is about three years out of date. Uh, actually no it's about 10 years out of date oh well um, <laughs> I use that literally just for removing components off um, off donor boards basically uh, that was actually given with the BJB workstation so uh, yeah it's well out of date but uh, never mind it still works still does the job just stinks a little bit more Got a UV pen here uh, so that's for curing the UV mask Got a bench supply. This is the bench supply that powers the soldering iron, um, or wherever I need to power at the time. Got a couple of banana jacks there with some custom cables. Uh, that goes to a barrel jack on the other end um, for the soldering iron, and then we've got another one here which is actually run to a five meter reel of uh, UV lights. And basically, what that's for is so as I can cure the UV mask if I've got to cure a, a large area at, at once, like I can just. You know, take out the reel that's under the table and uh, just basically cue it with a big reel instead of having to go by individually with this tiny little thing, which is crap. <laughs> um, I've got a cheap run-of-the-mill ultrasonic cleaner there that I use for cleaning foam boards. And I actually mainly use that for cleaning my reboiling jig. Um, it's a cheapy cheapy. It's not, it's not the best. I actually only use uh, isopropyl alcohol in it. I don't use anything else, you know, like the... Um, special fluids that you can get the Branson whatever it's called um, the barrel jacks I was talking about I've actually got a pack of them here in this tub uh, so these are uh, the barrel jacks and the female ends as well uh, so I bought them off eBay just to make those custom cables I'm actually using speaker cable but it's capable of running up to 10 amps 
and this bench power supply is only capable of putting out up to 5 amps so uh, never going to overload those cables um, over here we've got the BGA reboiling jig uh, reboiling station this is a Achi IR Pro SC uh, so it's a pretty good machine it's pretty uh, it's pretty up there in terms of BGA rework machines uh, it's the same as the Skotel just different branding now unfortunately the top plate did pack up on me the other day so that's uh, that was a bit annoying uh, I had to pay £65 for a new top plate I could have bought you know a cheap £10 one but I thought you know what if I'm going to buy one I might as well buy one that's going to last a few years and based on recommendations by a few people I bought the uh, the more expensive one um, and uh, yeah we've got some solder balls here uh, these are out of date but who cares uh, I have got some brand new ones but uh, these these came with this thing and to be honest solder's been in the ground for millions of years it's not going to be it's not going to be going out of date anytime soon uh, that's just a shelf life by, by the manufacturer quarter of a million balls inside this little tub apparently and I dropped the, the 0.5mm ones all over my desk a full box of them full tub of them um, so right now these particular if I can just get a you know hold the hold the camera somehow just lean it on the desk like that uh, so if I open this tub up now you'll see inside the tub you know there's a few bits and stuff in them so basically I dropped them all over the desk um, I'm using these ones now literally from hand reboiling only so them bits are not going to affect you um, but I dropped a quarter of a million balls on the desk and that's all I could pick up from them probably about 100,000, 200,000 maybe uh, I don't know, I don't know how many are there um, yeah 0.76mm we've got the 0.5mm just there so different sizes got the 0.45mm just there uh, and we've also got the 0.6mm just here uh, that's a random tub, don't know why that's there and uh, yeah that's pretty much it Right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Um, like I said, I'm not the best vlogger. Um, I've only got about six minutes left on this memory card. Um, you know, I've, I've, I haven't had time to empty it. I've had a few personal days off and things like that. Um, weird beard thing going on again. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you a little bit of an insight into the tools that I use. Um, it's not by any means it's not expensive equipment apart from you know the the computer and the actual bga rework station the bga rework station to buy brand new is around about 800 pound uh, or around about a thousand us dollars so it's a pretty expensive bit of kit um again not top of the line you can pay 10 20 30 thousand pound for one of these things um it's an end it's definitely an entry level machine uh, but it's you know it does the job and it does it pretty well so uh, it's a really good rework machine um, I personally paid four hundred pounds. I went to, I went from Willenhall in the UK where I live to London, one hundred and sixty miles, uh, to go and pick that thing up, or just outside London um, to go and pick that thing up and then travel back. So, you know, three hundred twenty, three hundred thirty mile round trip to go and get that thing for four hundred pounds, and uh, the guy had hardly used it. So um, yeah, it was a good deal, and it came with a load of extras such as a reboiling jig. Um, it come with uh, all of the um, solder balls, the flux, the reboiling stencils, um, loads of stuff, some spare some spare thermal couplers and things like that. Um, so it come with loads of stuff. Unfortunately, like I said, the top plate did pack up, but uh, I definitely made my money back off the entire machine before that packed up, so I'm really happy with that. Um, you know, it is one of these, these things happen, especially when you're buying second-hand equipment. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. Yes, I'm a messy technician. Yes, I'm a lazy technician. Um, maybe now you'll realise just how lazy I actually am. Um, but uh, yeah, um, this is basically my workshop. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to leave them there in the comment section down below. As I said, please remember to hit the subscribe button if you're not already. Um, I am trying really hard to get to 5,000 subs, and I do want to let you know that I do genuinely appreciate every single subscriber i mean that from from the bottom of my heart you know it's um the support that people have shown me on youtube you know i'm just an ordinary guy repairing stuff in your garden shed um and the support that people show on youtube you know uh, the people that keep coming back and keep watching the videos and things are what drives me to do more videos so hopefully you enjoy the content hopefully you enjoyed this little tour and be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it um 
but yeah, thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.